Hello, my Wealthy Wife family and friends. This is Ms. Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Marriage Man, as well as the founder of the Worth of Academy, and of course, your godmother of affluent, rich, and wealthy romance. How are you doing, Wealthy Wife fam and friends? <laughs> All right. I want to say thank you for joining me. I truly, truly do enjoy appreciate you guys being here with me. I do. I love having a moment to spend with you. I appreciate you allowing me to share the various wisdoms, ideologies, periodic rants. Yeah, I told you, sometimes, like I said, sometimes the rants don't make it to, don't make it to YouTube. It's like I get on my system before I actually record an audio. <laughs> and the reason being is sometimes, I guess, I just see so much stuff that is being done that is so detrimental to your mental and emotional and spiritual well-being. And at times, potentially your physical well-being. But like I said, I'm like, you know what? I'll say it again. I'm not here to save everybody. There are some folks that like trauma, drama. There's some folks that like, you know, scamming and whatever they're doing out there. It is what it is. It has nothing to do with me, nothing to do with the world of wealthy wife. But for those of you that actually are looking to do things in a way that's going to elevate you and the individuals that are part of your world who come into your world, this is what we do. Remember, wealthy wife is about you becoming that muse, that total package, emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. The money comes. I'll say it again. The money has to come. We don't have to scam and scheme to get the money, ladies. We don't. You don't, okay? I've got plenty of experience about to back that up, and so do the goddaughters, okay? But once again, it's a headspace. It's a mental space. And some folks are looking for shortcuts, and once again, shortcuts just bring you more problems. So if you're willing to do the work, you're willing to really learn yourself and become aware of how to bring the right things to you, the right people to you, and truly grow and expand, welcome to the world of Wealthy Wife. Now, my old school OG subscribers, once again, I adore you. I appreciate you and thank you. For my new and newer subscribers, I want to say first, welcome to the world of Wealthy Wife. And also, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you. And hope you two should become a long-term subscriber. For those that are my official Wealthy Wife goddaughters, once again, for the alumni, I appreciate the time we spent together. Hope all is well with you. If you are currently in the Academy, oh my gosh, ladies, I'm sitting there looking at homework. Uh, as you know, we have a, a master class starting officially today. Because as I post, this is a Saturday. April 6th, 2024. And the Glamour Magic Masterclass officially starts today. Now, enrollment will be open to now through next Friday. So if you haven't joined us, please do, because you're going to have a blast. But I'm looking at homework, because as I mentioned, there was preliminary homework for them to do. And because they had the access to the archetypes, the Wealthy Wife archetypes. I have about 13 archetypes that are, I consider to be part of the Wealthy Wife process. And I love reading the homework because, you know, you had a chance to listen to the archetype homework and then they have quizzes to fill out. Yes, I have quizzes now. I, I love, I love the growth curve of Wealthy Wife, just so you know. But I love these, these answers are just amazing. Wow, just amazing. I'm trying to figure out a way to read some of this stuff to you guys. Um, okay, just use an example. One of my goddaughters. Reflecting on Erica Badu and Eric and Elizabeth Taylor's Bohemian Free Spirit, how can unconventional beauties challenge and redefine social um, societal standards? Now, the answer for this goddaughter was an unconventional beauty can inspire all women that we are more than a, a symmetrical face and ideal body. Real beauty is really the confidence to be comfortable in your skin. And this is very, very true. She also mentioned, because one of the archetypes is the Bohemian, just so you know. In reference to, once again, I have archetypes, the Domina, I've talked about her which is the mistress dominatrix basic energy. What do the archetypes of Domina, the Enigma, and the free spirit, uh, the Bohemian free spirit represent to you? Because once again, these are energies that are not typical. And are there any aspects of these that resonate with your own personality or aspirations? And she wrote, these archetypes represent the wild woman or the witch. The Domina is a sexual empowered woman who understands her sexual power and can be in control of this energy without shame. She is so correct on that because I am a Domina. Um, the Enigma is a trendsetter or change maker. I will like, she goes, I would like to become a change maker. I would like to be uh, to become to build a safe environment, safe community for wild women. The Bohemian free spirit is free artistic expression and feeling safe in exploring her erotic side. 
So she's interested in tapping into the Domina, the Enigma, and the uh, Bohemian's free spirit as archetypes. Because as I mentioned, when you guys are archetypes, you're using more than one. There will be one, usually when women are just learning how to step into their own energy, there's usually one that really resonates with them. But the more you relax into the space of the archetypes, then you begin to understand that there's more than one. And as I said before, myself, oh yeah, I'm at least, I can play with a few of them energetically. So I'm excited because the Glamour Magic Masterclass is all about you understanding how to work your personal magic, M meaning your personal brand of beauty, how you dress, how you talk, how you smell, how you move in the world. What connections are you looking to meet? We are going to be doing spiritual practices here. I was contemplating it because I did not do, I don't think I said it in our newsletter this week. I am so sorry, ladies, for those who actually, I have access to it. I apologize, but I've been so busy with some other stuff. So I'm definitely sending back out next week. And what I think I might do next week is actually send you guys one of the baths that will be included in the um, Glamour Magic. And guess what? This is so, I get so excited because I love when, my spirituality lines itself up because it's always a reminder for me that I am in alignment with what I'm supposed to do. The glamour magic, once again, is about beauty, emotional, once again, your physical beauty, your spiritual beauty, you're just the whole essence of you as a woman. And I was listening to someone discussing this upcoming solar eclipse that we're having. It's full eclipse on Monday. And she was saying one of the aspects of the solar eclipse is just that it's beauty. It's how you love self, how you care for self. How are you working your personal energy for the benefit of you and also assisting others? So it is about beauty. How are you showing up? How are you being authentic? Because I'm always talking about being authentic. And authenticity, ladies, there's nothing can replace you. You That's what I said before. People are trying to act like other people, look like other people. All you do is disempower yourself and empower them. That's exactly what you're doing. When you are unable to appreciate yourself and you're trying to be a carbon copy of someone else, you are literally feeding your energy to her and depleting your own. So to me, that has never made any sense. And it still makes no sense to me because what I want to, when I can be building up my own energy. And once again, we know, we know I love being me. You know, I love, love, I love being me. I could think of no one better to be than myself. And that's the way I desire all of you to feel as well, because you're fabulous. So the Glamour Magic course literally is, and, and I'm, we're going to be discussing the goddesses that have been showing up. I said before, when I started to put this course together, I literally sat down to find out who wanted to participate. And I had about 13 goddesses energy show up. Yeah, 13. Which, by the way, is a feminine number. They have you guys scared the number 13 because it's our number. Yeah, yeah, hello. Yes, it's our number. 13 represents feminine. Feminine energy, feminine magic, feminine mystique, feminine. It's us. And that's why they have you guys terrified of it. Because once again, anytime you, a woman understands and learns her power, they want to freak out. Because when we know who we are, we can move the world. Do you understand this? It's the truth. So anyway, so I get excited because... The energies that are part of this course are dynamic on a scale, on a galactic scale. It's not just working the space of here. It is enormous because it's time for women to step up and reclaim their truth, their energy, their power in the way that is feminine energy. And you guys are being taught feminine energy from a masculine point of view, just so you know. I'll say it again. I watch things out that I'm going... But they're teaching it from the masculine. There are some out there that are teaching from a feminine energy space, which I love to see. I love to watch. But some of them, most of them are still teaching you guys from a, mod a masculine model. One of the things I want to talk about in this audio today is, you know, in reference to, you know, where do you want to be in reference to relationships? Yeah. Now, for those of you that actually were able to stay into this part, because I realize some folks will disappear. That makes me laugh. Some folks really can't sit still for 10 minutes to listen to something. But that's all right, because they're going to miss the information. And that's for those of you that are staying, I've got some good information. I have some great information to share with you because I have a question. I always think in terms of relationships because I love relationships. Oops. Hang on. I'm sorry. Just disrupted my cat. I did the, the you know, the cat had to move to get out of my way. <gasps> Tragic, right? Anyway, he'll lay back down. But thinking in terms of your relationships, because, you know, 
folks out here, you know, I want to find a man that I can submit to. And I, you know, I want a man that leads and all this stuff. And it all sounds good in theory until you listen. I'm listening to them talk. I'm thinking, but you don't even understand how to be you. You don't understand even how to be a woman. You don't understand how to be with a man, but you want one that's going to lead you. And you don't understand what leadership actually means because leadership is a partnership, just so you know. A leader needs a person that actually can also communicate and, you know, offer ideas and offer information to assist. They have a pool of information to choose and select from. It's not just all being carried on their back. So I thought about this because once again, as I said before, my background is I am a domina. Very much so. I've been one for many, 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 many years. So I understand power dynamics is what I'm saying. I understand and a level that the majority of you have no clue about because you're not in anything else but the vanilla world, so to speak. You don't know anything about alternative lifestyles. I study the things I'd study because I'm always curious and I love to know different things. I love different points of view because that brings about a wonderful, wonderful collection of knowledge and wisdom I can share with all of you. And the Goddaughters definitely benefit from this because I can answer questions and there's no shame. There's no, there's no fear of judgment because trust, I get answers, ask some very, very interesting questions and I want them asked to be the interesting questions because this is a safe space to have those questions answered. And you're going to receive a mature answer. You're going to receive a wise answer. So let's talk about relationships. I'm thinking in terms of there's what's called the female-led relationship. And then there's, once again, the submissive. And I've also mentioned many times, most of you don't even know what submissive is. Okay? And that's the part that really has my mind spinning sometimes. I'm watching people talk. I'm like going, but you don't even, you're, I go, you're not a submissive. That's not submissive. You're best passive-aggressive. Passive, most of the women are talking are this passive aggression because what happen is initially she'll be like all sweet and charming and whatever. And the man is, you know, he's leading and, you know, she's, she's whatever. Cause now I want to feel safe. But then she finally realizes that she's got a controlling man, a domineering man or a man that at one particular point in time did want her to participate. He'll take, he'll handle the burden of the decision, but he needs her input and she offers him nothing. And then one day she wakes up out of her cloud and one day she actually grows up and matures and she actually has an opinion. At this point in time, he doesn't want to hear it. He's like, dude, I've been working this just fine without you. I don't know. We're good. Because she has not shared anything. She's been of no assistance to him, meaning offering up a woman's wisdom because we have insight that they don't have. And then there's a problem. Or a woman who says she wants to be submissive and she runs across a very domineering man. Not a dominant because there's a difference. They're, they're, and once again, like I said, you guys don't know this stuff. Most of you, some of you do. There's a handful that might. But most of you have no idea what I'm talking about. You don't. I, I know you don't. I know for a fact you don't. And that's what I'm talking to what I'm talking right now. I will go deeper into this once again on Patreon. But I want, want to share this here. Once a dominant man. Once a strong man. Do you know what that means? What does it mean to you? Do you have any idea? Do you have a clue? You want to submit to this man? You want this leader? Do you understand what that means? Have you had any discussions? Have you had any conversations? Do you know what this man's really about? Hmm? <laughs> Once again, I guarantee most of you don't because you're not taught it. You're not taught. You're taught that love just happens and he'll just figure it out and we'll be fine. No, you're not going to be fine. You're not. There's communication that has to be had. You need to sit down and have these conversations before you get married. There are questions. There are specific questions you should be asking a man. If you're the one who wants to submit in a relationship, if you're the one who's decided that you want to be not, you don't want to make the decisions, you want him to do, you want a total power exchange, basically, basically. I don't want to think about it, whatever you say. I don't want to think about whatever you say. It's fine with me. By the way, that's not a submissive either. That's passive aggressive. Because if he does something and it doesn't work out, you're going to be mad. Because then you're going to think, well, I probably should have said something. No, it's too late now. These are conversations you need to be having. If you're going to be someone who has decided she's going to submit to a man's leadership, you need to be sure that man understands how to lead. 
And he can only understand how to lead you if he understands what's on your flipping mind. Okay? And he has to have the, the, the right to make the decision whether or not he wants to take you on as that responsibility. Because as a dominant, he's going to be one responsible for your well-being. He's going to be responsible for your emotional, not entirely, but he's going to be contributing to your emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical well-being. A great dominant, that's what he wants to do. And let's talk about the sex. Now, some of y'all probably blush 14 times on that one, but that's a discussion he's had as well. Oh, ladies, I can go deep. I can go deep on these topics, okay? I'll say it again. I teach from a place of experience, and my experience is very broad and very deep. Now, I got them, you know, <laughs> basically yelling at you guys because sometimes I, I really, sometimes I really do. Sometimes I really, really, really do want to yell at women. But once again, I'm like, but why? There's really no reason to because some of them want to stay. They're going to just stay stuck in their in their their space and ugh, whatever. Not my problem. But for those of you that really have a desire to be wise women, and this is a path you desire, we need to really discuss what submission is, and how to find the proper dominant man for you, that leader. And it has this has nothing to do with BDSM. Just so you know. Now, if that is a desire of yours, we can we can have the discussion on Patreon. I'm not having a discussion on YouTube, just so you know. I'm saving that for Patreon because I do want to go deeper on some things. Um, kind of warming the things up on on over on Patreon, but I that is a discussion I do want to save there because I can go deeper. But I need questions. So if that's what your desire is, that's fine, but you need to understand how to articulate it. A lot of irresponsibility out here. That's the part I guess what gets me. And once again, that comes from me being involved in the things I've been involved in. And I've said before, in the world of BDSM, because once again, some of you know, most of you don't. Most of you have no clue what goes on over there. A lot of weird ideas, a lot of weird concepts, courtesy of media. But it is a consensual space, meaning the people that are involved, they're there because they choose to be. And if you are engaging in any kind of activity with somebody, you're doing so because you've had a conversation and you mutually have agreed upon it. I've said before, I would love more of those conversations to be had in what we call the vanilla world, meaning the regular people. Because most of you don't have discussions. You just fall willy-nilly into stuff and I wonder what's going on. No, that is not how it's done on that side. In this world, conversations are had People come to agreement or they come or they understand that they're not a good fit and they move on. There's no lingering. There's no waiting. If it's not a good fit, the dominant says, nope, and they move on. Or sometimes the submissive will say, nope, and moves on. It is consensual. All right. There are agreements that are signed. Yes, it's deep and it's very, 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 very well thought out. When it's done right. Now, is everything perfect? No, because people aren't perfect. But for the most part, and I'd say 80% of the time, it's done well. Because you have responsible people having responsible conversations with individuals where they're coming to agreement on what is going to happen. So, let's talk about the female-led relationships, okay? Now... A lot of women can't even get that right out there. But once again, that's coming out of the vanilla world. For those, once again, that have no concept on how to sit down and have conversations, how to express themselves, how to stand very firmly in the fact that this is what they have to have. Where a man is going to be the one that really follows the lead of a woman. And uh, ladies, just so you know, that's the way it used to be. Yeah. We Remember, I said before, women, we set the laws. Men are the, are the enforcers. We are the ones who set the law. And that's done because, once again, the very unique connection that we have to divinity. And because we are the bearers of life. We're not going to be out here trying to go, we, trust, we can do war. We can do, we, 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 mm -hmm. and we got strategies. We strategize in ways that men, that's why they're so flipping scared of women sometimes. Women, like I said, we can't take them out physically, but mentally, oh Lord. We can plot and plan like nobody's business when we're pissed off. And also plot, plot and plan quite beautifully when we're very happy. So the goal is to keep us on the happy side where the 
prosperity, the wealth, the, 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 the fertility and all the really great things happen as opposed to when we, when we hit that Kali Ma side and we're just going to stomp out life. Yeah. But there's plenty of gray areas in between, thankfully. There's plenty of air, there's plenty of areas in between for negotiation and working things out, thankfully. But I watch these women that go through this process that they're very dominant women. They to be considered aggressive women. Which I, I guess I'd probably use the word aggressive as opposed to dominant, because dominant is different than aggression. A dominant woman who truly understands who she is, there's no, there's no, we're not aggressive. We don't have to be. We, we don't have to be. There's no reason for us to be aggressive because we understand how to speak our truth. We understand how to say what we need to say, get the answers that we require, yes or no. Yes, this is great. We can work this out or no, not interested. We're not wobbling in our conversations. We're not, well, I'm not really sure. I need to think about it. Well, maybe I should give him a chance. No, no, no. We're not wasting that kind of time. It either works or it doesn't. Now. Do we have a, do we offer a grace period sometimes that can happen, but he has to have more of the yes things that we require because we understand that sometimes there's going to be a learning curve. This goes with submissive. This goes for those who are going to be involved in what we call the TPE, which is a total power exchange. There is a learning curve, especially if a man is unfamiliar with it. So there's a, there is a grace period. But if it's somebody that we know is a hard no, we're going to let him go. We're not going to be thinking, well, he has potential. No, we're not thinking he has potential, darling. We don't do that over here. If you're a true dominant woman, we're not thinking potential. <laughs> we don't want to be bothered. It's a headache. Trust me. It's a headache. No. You want me to be here to do all this for you and you're going to just give me a no, we're good. Just no. But that's a dominant. So I watch aggressive women. Let's put it to that way that really aren't great when it comes to communicating with men because there's a lot of fear there. There's a lot of, a lot of whatever. There's a lot of stuff going on there emotionally, mentally, spiritually, potentially that causes them to distrust men and they're not really sure about their own personal power. So they wind up with these, they choose these men that are basically really, really weak ass men. And we've seen them. I've, I've seen there's women I follow. I don't, I see stuff on Instagram. There's a handful of them. I don't follow them, but I do periodically tap into their information because the information they share on the business side is amazing. I mean, these are some very, very powerful business women. You know, those boss babes, boss chicks, you know what I'm talking about. And some of them wind up marrying these men, and these men are just, I'm looking at it going, ew. Because he really isn't bringing anything into the process. He's not offering up any opinions. He's not off. He's not offering anything. He's just, he's there for the ride. He's there. He's basically, she's his meal ticket. Oof. Can you just ugh, ugh. No. No. That's no. That's and that's not a female led relationship just so you know. That's a mess. That's a hot mess because once again conversations weren't had. She did not sit down and establish what she really desired. She was somebody who just decided she needed to be married. She was lonely. Biological clock is ticking. Whatever. Whatever. She doesn't want a man who would stand in the space of being a dominant man because her energy is just over the top and pretty much out of control. So she runs into a man that feels less threatening. And I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about one of my friends, uh, a guy that I've known since college. And he was talking about his ex-wife and how her second husband was basically that you know because she she had to be she had she wanted to wear the pants in a relationship and this friend of mine he but that wasn't going to happen he definitely was a protective provider man he is definitely a dominant i've known him for 30 years okay we went to college together and god have i known him that long yeah i guess i have wow that's crazy anyway um and, you know, they got divorced and she, you know, she decided she wouldn't get married again. And the guy that she married, definitely beta, doesn't work, half-ass works because she has a great job making tons of money. She, you know, she's pulling down six figures a year, you know, she, you know, whatever. And he barely works, can't hold down, they can't hold a job. He spends most of his time in the gym working out, playing video games. Now, she thought that was cute initially, but now talking to my friend, 
he's saying how she's fussing. They have children together, so they talk. So she's fussing at him about, you know, how this man doesn't work. He doesn't hold down a job. And, you know, she's, she's tired of being on one response for all the bills. And blah, 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 blah. But when she was in a situation where she didn't have to do that, because when they met, when she met and married my friend, you know, she came in with basically nothing. He wasn't one who had the resources. He put her through college. I mean, and he was, that was his wife. He paid for her to go to college. She got this great degree. She's got this great job. They had two, three kids. They had three children. And then one day she just decided, once again, she just, you know, she was going to beat on her chest. And she's the boss, babe, boss chick now. She went out the marriage, got out. Now she's complaining. Because her husband, he's just basically a couch potato. Okay. That is not a female-led relationship, ladies. In a female-led relationship, this is where the man understands and knows how to honor his woman. He understands how to treat her in a way that she is on a pedestal. Because she explains to him her her expectations. He understands the rules in the process. And this is a man who is a man. And I'm going to share this with you guys. Because some people think, oh, these are spineless men. No, they're not. Once again, we're talking, about my, we're talking about a world that I'm very familiar with. They're not spineless men. These are some very powerful men at times. Very powerful men. But they understand, once again, just the magic of a woman, especially when she is in her glory, when she is tapped in and able to truly not have to worry about some of the crazy mundane stuff that happens in the world. There is nothing wrong with us going out there and being the empresses and goddesses and, you know, all this high priestess, this powerful, powerful feminine energy. That wild one that my, like I said, my goddaughter mentioned, there's nothing wrong with it. Especially when it's done with intelligence and emotional intelligence. That is something that's very, very, very desirable for some men, especially powerful men. I'll say this again. I have so much to teach you guys. I really, 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 really do. I'll say it again. I'll share some of this on YouTube, obviously. I'll share some on Patreon. But a lot of this stuff stays inside a wealthy wife, inside the courses, which I'll be adding some of the stuff. Some of the stuff is already done, but I've got to add. I'm doing some new stuff for the Academy. Once again, private tutoring. Glamour Magic, we're going to touch on some of this in Glamour Magic a little bit. Because once again, I want the goddaughters to start thinking about where they desire to be. Because I've got some of them that, you know, want to be in that submissive state, so to speak. But they also want to be in a position to lead men. I'm like, okay, you can't do both. We've got to, I've got to, we've got to, we've got to figure this out. Because here's the kicker. A submissive does have some control over a dominant. But if you're looking to be somebody that he's going to look up to. And you're going to be someone that he's coming to for a certain type of wisdom. You have to be the dominant. Because you can't sit there when something happens and go, well, no, 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 you have to come with clarity. I said again, it's a different space inside a wealthy wife, just so you know. But it's the perfect space entire inside a wealthy wife for women who are really ready to own their truth. I said again, I'm not interested in most of the stuff you guys are being taught out there. I'm really not. I look at it and go, mm, sounds good on paper. Okay. And it's good for some people. Absolutely. I am here for the women that are ready to stand very beautifully in their power. Very, very gracefully, graciously, powerfully, just mm, owning the dominion of who they are. And then moving into the world in a way that the men who want, need, and desire them see them and they understand how to speak to them they understand how to bring this man under her power and i'll say this once more and we and here like i said we're not doing it and we're not doing crazy weird stuff to make that happen i'll say it again i'm not about scamming there's nothing about scamming there's not there's nothing crazy going on over here the relationships that they're going to build, the relationships they do build are with men who honor them and appreciate them and adore them. 
I'm not doing stress and strife. I'm not doing, I, I'm trust. There's no reason to. There's, I'll say it again. There's no reason to. When you understand who you are as a woman and understand how to call to you, the kind of men you desire, they show up and they're not problematic because they're going to listen to you. I'd rather you're the submissive who understands how to speak her mind and make sure she has chose the right man who's going to be her leader, her dominant, so to speak. Or if she is the one who is the lead, has the lead in the relationship as in a female-led relationship. These are empowered women. They're not trying to worry about, well, I don't know if I should do that or what would people think. And, well, I don't know. Yeah. Mm-mm. No. That's how you guys get in trouble. Not standing, not standing on your square, so to speak. Not understanding who you are. So, I'm thrilled. I am. I've got, oh my gosh, this is like, I'm, I'm loving this because to finally have a chance to really teach this the way I want to teach it. And to have the right audience, the right students that are ready. Because this requires you to also be fearless. Because you've got to understand first self. How did I come into my space of knowing that I'm a dominant when it comes to, and hear me, the men in my life are dominant men. They are. I love a very strong man. But I also have those that, you know, understand. It's, ugh, I don't even try to explain dynamics because I want to. I don't feel like it. I'm not going to explain my dynamics. But understand this. The men in my world, we get along just fine. We get along great. Because we have conversations. They understand who I am. I understand who they are. Some of them understand that there will be no relationship beyond friendships, which is perfect. It works for both of us. I remember one time when I was dating a gentleman who actually was a dom. He was a dom in the world of BDSM, had been one for decades. And when he and I met, it was on, on I think it was a millionaire match. I met him, match.com or millionaire match. I don't remember anymore. It's been a while. But when we met, and I always had a way of doing my profile that put a little something in there, like little, there's like a little twist of information. And because I knew a really uh, the right mind would understand what I was saying. I said before, your pro, your profiles are powerful. You got to understand how to write your profiles if you want to be successful with online dating. Because I I've had great experiences in the past with online dating. I haven't done anything recently, so I remember him, and. We wanted to be great friends. We dated briefly, briefly. Friendship definitely better than dating. Trust it was. I mean, he had a hard time believing that I was a dominant because he was always believed that women were sub submissives. I'm like, I'm not a submissive. He's like, you got to be everybody, especially in that world, has started out as a submissive at one point or a slave. I was like, I know. I came straight into this world as a dom, as a domina, as a do dominatrix, straight up. Never been a sub. No way a switch. He's like, are you serious? I'm like, very, very. Mm-mm. I understand how to be at ease with a man and have a man. I understand how to have a man lead in my world. I don't mind that. I, I love a man in a leadership position. I, I totally appreciate it. But I understand those dynamics of a relationship. I go, but I'm not a submissive. Not in the way that you're thinking. Not at all. He's like, huh. So, I told, so, but I told him, I go, but you know what? We can play with the idea. Why not? You, I, I, I trust you. I've known you for a while. So, you know. He learned rather rapidly that I'm not a submissive. Yeah. Mm hmm He was stunned. <laughs> he, was, he was, I'm sorry. It was, I remember him. I just, God, I hope he's still alive. I haven't talked to this man in so long. He was wonderful. He was such a wonderful person. He really, and intelligent. Oh my God, this man was like a nuclear engineer. I mean, he was like brainiac beyond brainiacs and i love that about him i said before i love a really intelligent nerdy man that's one of my favorites as well got a couple others but i remember him because he was like he goes you really are not a submissive i'm like no i'm not i go i told you i'm not you know you want to test me you know because you know he would play like try to play like little mind games and different things with me to test and i come right back at him he's like going damn i'm like i told you I go, but I figured I, you know, I'm not a submissive. It's not, that's not my space. I am a dominant woman. I know who I am. And saying that I'm a dominant woman, once again, it takes nothing away from men. Because I love men. I appreciate them. I honor them. I adore them. 
I understand how to move in the world with them. I understand how they think. I understand the processes of men. And men love me. Powerful men love me. Because once again, we can have real conversations. We can have very real, deep, honest conversations. So what about you? What do you want to do? Are you ready to step in your space and understand who you are and live your truth? Or do you still want to be out here fumbling around? I'm curious. I'm very serious about this conversation. Do you desire to learn the truth? Or do you want to still keep playing? It's up to you, ladies. Anyway, once again, enrollment is still open for the, uh, the Glamour Magic. I am contemplating putting it on special again. Because once again, it's at regular tuition at the moment. So I'm thinking about... Maybe I'll offer the tuition special again. Just because of the solar eclipse. So if you click on the button below, you will have a chance to enroll. And it's only for the weekend. It will be back to regular price on Monday. If you are thinking about enrolling, I'm going to give you guys two days. Saturday today and Sunday to enroll at the $200 discounted price for the tuition. So that you can catch up. You know, you have access to the preliminary coursework, which was the coursework for the first class. And then you'll be able to come join us on the next Saturday, which will be the 13th. But why not? For the eclipse, we'll do a weekend special. And then once again, we can start figuring out what it is you truly desire. So you guys can quit wandering around here just all dazed and confused and can be finally enjoying your lives the way you're supposed to with men who truly will honor you and appreciate you and you understand how to have conversations with men who actually are going to be a fit for you because you know who you are. Yes, hello, I adore you. You know I adore you. You know I do. You know I do. I wouldn't be here if I didn't, okay? <laughs> anyway. Get yourselves enrolled to the Glamour Magic. Trust you're going to enjoy the class. It's 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 amazing. I'm doing some things different with this one that I haven't done in the past. And yeah. So that is all for today and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.